Hey everyone, it's Dora from FlippingHousesAndPancakes.com and I thought today I'd do something a little different. I thought I would show you a little bit around my kitchen. It's in its natural state, which means it is not perfectly organized and clean. Um, it is in a household with five kids and lots of chaos. Um, but I thought I'd show you some stuff that I haven't shown you before and some of that is the imperfections that you'll find in a kitchen and some of that is dependent on who installed it and how that happened and some of it is just little stories that I'll tell you so uh, let's go check out my kitchen a little bit. So the first thing I thought I would show you is my glass backsplash. I have two issues with it and it's pretty distressing actually. I'm going to show you. It's very important to get a really good tile person. The person who installs your tile, it's super important. Tile is kind of like a permanent fixture and it's, it's really important that they do a good job cutting and installing it. And I'll just show you why. Okay, so this is my backsplash tile. Uh, I special ordered it. I think it was from Lowe's. It was many years ago. This nine or ten years ago at this point. Uh, nine years. And this backsplash tile, I mean, I just loved it from the first minute I saw it. It is about 16 inches long, four inches tall. Uh, subway tile. And it's glass and in the back it has paint and texture in a cashmere sort of color and it has this It gives this look of like silk behind glass and I thought it was just awesome And I decided this is what we needed to put in this kitchen and that it's, it's very calming because my countertop is not very calming and so I bought this beautiful tile and I didn't even use my crew to install it. I actually hired somebody else and uh, a special a special contractor and I guess you should always be really careful because if you look could you see the corners can you see these cuts right here this is on the on the wall in my very fancy special order tile they did such a bad job of cutting the tile and then installing it uh, with glass tile you need to have a special blade and you have to do it carefully it's very easy to chip and you can see they did like a really interesting job of installing cutting and installing the tile in fact when I saw them cutting these pieces I was so upset you could see some more jagged edges up here look at it look how bad that is I was so upset by how bad the tile cutting was I told them like you have to install all the bad parts at least in the corners because I don't want to see them in the middle of my I just I don't want to see them on the ends I don't want to see them in the middle it was it was pretty bad i it was so expensive to buy more tile and they were just cutting every single one of them badly so that was pretty bad um i'm gonna show you on the other side of my kitchen another issue with my with my uh backsplash tile so here's another issue with my backsplash tile you can see i'm i'm working on dinner here but um i thought i would show you i had a tile that broke i couldn't figure out why it broke and then we realized it just was not installed correctly this is stuff that's from the grout so don't worry about that um do you see behind there there's almost nothing holding this tile onto the wall now this is not the broken one this is actually a replacement one i have to have my crew come and and reattach it to the wall or attach this new one to the wall in the meantime i've been just kind of just kind of pushing it <laughs> pushing it up against the wall so it's it's kind of protecting the wall there um since your backsplash is not just pretty, it does actually protect your wall. But uh, they put so little, they did something called back buttering where they put such little, um, a little bit of mortar on the back of my tiles when they installed them that I was lucky, I guess, that only one fell off. So eventually, the good news is we had extras, so eventually I will get this replaced. It's important to remember, you got to have a good tile person because they're the ones who are not going to make a mistake of putting only a little bit of that nice adhesive on when you're trying to install your wall tile. Okay, so my decor cooktop looks awesome and it looks messy because it just spilled something, but um, normally it looks cleaner than that. 
But my big day core cooktop, let me tell you a little bit about that fun. So if you saw my blog post, if you didn't, um, we installed this. It was supposed to be an amazing cooktop. It's a 36 inch wide, five burner decor cooktop. And I was so excited to use it. And I just never felt like it cooked really well. And I also felt like it got worse over the years. I cleaned it. I scrubbed it. Finally, I got to the point very recently where I was like, it's been nine years. I have to throw this out. I, I need a different cooktop. If I need to cook something quickly, I put it on my electric cooktop, which doesn't make any sense. Electric stoves should cook slower. Um, and I just, I couldn't take it. So I cleaned it. I, I went online. I looked at all kinds of things. How can I fix it? Eventually we realized um, we needed to check the regulator in the bottom of my cooktop. Uh, regulator is what keeps the gas from just doing whatever it wants. It prevents you from having buildup in the back of your stove and eventually <laughs> potential explosions. You don't want those. So regulators are important. And we ended up, I had somebody from my crew come and pull it off and take a look at it and realize that my regulator was missing an important piece. And it had been missing that piece for nine years because the guy who installed my cooktop took it out. <laughs> and that was the piece that allows you to have more gas come through. So we ended up having to have the regulator replaced and now I have these giant flames that I never had for nine years and it's awesome. But again, it's another reminder of, hey, the installer is the important part here. <laughs> my, my unit was fine. My installer did something bad and boom, there it is. <laughs> like, that's the problem. All right, let me show you some other parts of my kitchen. Okay, now I don't want it to make it sound or seem like the guys who installed my kitchen did everything wrong. They did a lot of really good things. And one thing I want to show you is if you take a look all the way up at my crown molding, can you see it? Can you see my crown molding? Look at the way they did the cuts. Do you see how the wood comes together on those corners? All along there's seams and you don't even see it because they did a tremendous job. Yes, my kid left their frying pan on the stove. <laughs> when my kids made lunch, they left the frying pan there instead of putting it in the sink. Anyhow, um, so I, and I have seen really bad examples of the corner mitering in kitchen cabinets. And that's one thing my installers did an amazing job of was they mitered the corners beautifully because a bad mitered corner, the material's all the same. If you do a bad mitered corner, the kitchen just looks cheaper. So that's one of the things that my installer did really well. Let me show you something else. Okay, I don't really want to show you this because it's covered in a bunch of groceries. So I'm going to flip the camera around for a minute and then I'll talk about it. One second. Okay, my island here, do you see it? Covered in groceries. Yes, I got a lot of groceries. So let me show you the problem with this island. When the guy installed it, I said, hey, how come you didn't, you didn't attach anything at the bottom of the cabinet? And my installer told me, don't worry, the countertop will be so heavy that you won't have any issues. I can move my entire island a little bit this way and a little bit that way. And while that may seem like, oh, that doesn't make a difference, I have a dishwasher in that island. That means I've got electricity and I've got water running through the cabinetry. And you don't want that moving. So again, back to who does your installation? Did he do a good job? Does it look amazing? Yes, it looks great. Did he think, oh, if somebody leans against the island, it won't move? It moves when you lean against the island. So <laughs> that's just something, another fun little detail when you go through your house. And this is, again, it was my first kitchen, so I didn't know quite, I mean, I knew to ask about that. I didn't know quite enough to make sure that all these things were done perfectly. And um, I've learned a lot over the years, some of it straight from my kitchen, of course. And uh, I just, <laughs> that's one of the things I learned. Always make sure that they secure the island cabinets because otherwise, they might move when you lean against them. So that's a fun, interesting thing 
that I learned doing my kitchen that I would never do again. Uh, but that's that was before we got into renovation, really. My husband knew some stuff, but that was before we did a lot of renovation, before um, we had a big crew, before we had done a lot of flips. And so this kitchen was like the first one I designed. Um, I was still a newbie when I was doing this, and I learned a lot in my own kitchen. And I get to live with it every single day. So uh, let me show you something else. Okay, so another thing that I've learned over the years, and fortunately I have not had this issue in my own kitchen sink, but we're usually very careful to talk to whoever installs it. And the person who installed my sinks was a very good installer, and he told us how we had to build up the cabinet underneath to make sure that our sink does not fall down. That's right, a lot of a lot of countertop companies when they install your sink for you because that's who does it your cabinet installer usually installs the sink they just kind of leave it on a lip and put the counter on top of it and it's literally just glued in well if you have this giant sink I've got a 30 inch a 30 inch wide 10 inch dimp sink here this is like a bathtub that's what I would say if you give a baby a bath in this sink the installer if they don't put some support under it or they don't rest it on the cabinet properly your sink will fall down with enough weight in it so one thing that i did learn is you've got to have an you've got to make sure that it is all installed correctly so there's another another time another example of when the person who installs it is really what makes the difference. The sink itself, you know, it could be any brand. Uh, this one is Vigo, love it. There you go, it's my Vigo uh, sink. It's been in here for nine years, scratched up a little bit, but it does an amazing job. I'm very happy with it, cleans up very nicely. And it stays put because my installer supported it correctly. My dinner is just about ready and my kids should be walking in any minute. So I'm going to sum up this tour by saying it's all about who installs your stuff. It's not just about the product that you buy, but it's about who does the installation in your kitchens and in your bathrooms. And you can see some examples of that in my own kitchen right here. I hope you enjoyed that fun little tour. And if you did, please go ahead and like my, my uh, video, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell for notifications so you find out every time I upload a new video, and of course check out my website, flippinghousesandpancakes.com.